Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing you guys a new news daily video now. I'm going to be continuing on with the director of football situation and there are potential candidates to take over the role. Now, starting with Gianfranco Zola. Now, when it comes to this report, there is no substantial information at all surrounding Gianfranco Zola coming to take over from the club and uh, honestly, I don't really think it's going to happen. I think it's just some news report or if anything, really, maybe something leaked out in regards to potential targets because you have to realize in football especially there's always a list of targets that clubs go through before they really narrow down who they really want to bring to the club now with Zola of course he's a club legend one of the best players I've ever seen and of course it makes sense you know Italian uh, he knows the club very well well respected uh, he has a nice philosophy of football as well friends with Antonio Conte maybe that could be something that could potentially help him stay at the club you've always had like an Italian identity at the club as well and um you know really with the story there is no substantial information at all surrounding him and i think it's just uh, a rumor that's been not even leaked out just being you know created and manifested but anyway moving on to another potential target and that is campus now with lewis campus he was the ex monaco director of football and he really kick-started the whole model now with monaco what originally happened was originally they were Basically, I could be Tech Paris Saint Germain or Man C. They cared about spending ridiculous amounts of money bringing in top class players. They spent 50 million plus on Falcao. They spent 70 million to bring in Joao Martinho and James Rodriguez combined to the club. And of course, you know, there was a lot of excitement in Liga because they're thinking, you know, finally a team can challenge Paris Saint Germain. But again, the reality of football, and I'm surprised why these business people don't really realize during the beginning is that, you know, Monaco, their stadium is very small. 9,000 attendants on average, it's not sustainable. They were never ever gonna make enough money to balance the books at all. And they realized that, especially when the owner at the time was going through a divorce settlement, which is costing him a lot of money. So he couldn't really just plow money however he wanted to. So they had to come up with a new philosophy and direction to lead Monaco to greater heights. And this is where Luis Campos came. Now, he was the ex Real Madrid technical director. He, he had worked with Mourinho before and they realized he was the best candidate to come. Now, he really transformed everything. He went to the grassroots to the top. He developed Monaco to having one of the best scouting systems in France and in Europe as well. And they changed their whole philosophy. They decided to bring in players that would fit their style that they needed and they targeted them very young. Now, for example, Yannick Carrasco, Bernardo Silva, they were actually pushed to the Monaco B team. Marshall, Kylian Mbappe made a step up from the B team to the first team. A lot of players have done that. And, you know, it's an environment where you can get the game time to really develop. And he brought in a lot of other great players such as Bakayoko, Fabinho, Benjamin Mendy, the list goes on. And with his model, Obviously, Monaco's season last year, tremendous success. They won the league, got to the semi-final of the Champions League, played some of the best football in Europe. And plus, all the players made a ridiculous amount of money. And Luis Campos has an eye for talent. He's at Lille at this moment in time and already. Brought in uh, Bielsa as a manager. They signed an old ex-Chelsea target, Thiago Mai from Santos. He's playing for them now. And they've been going for a lot of young South American players. And Lille are doing okay so far in Liga. But of course, it's a project now. He has been linked with Chelsea and I did bring another story in regards to Didier Drogba which I'm going to touch on later on but again if he was to come Campos wouldn't really affect Marina's overall plan for the club and what she's thinking is she can outsource Emanalo's original role because he had a lot of power and say when it came to certain things but she's thinking I don't have to give one person that position to maintain that I could actually outsource that and give other people more responsibilities and maybe in a way that could make more sense because there's been one issue at Chelsea recently and that's too many cooks in the kitchen in regards to transfer activity and transfer targets you know Conte has his preferences Marina has her preferences and then Emanalo has his preferences and with Emanalo's preferences you know he introduced a data analysis system at the club instead of sending tons of scouts all across Europe to scout players they focus on specific targets they start with video analysis 
then they move on to sky reports and then the data analysis and of course the issue we were having in the summer especially was that we had a lot of top targets that we were going for but then negotiations took so long because there wasn't really a focus a narrow down focus on who the main targets were for example we were linked with everyone last summer and we were making bids for everyone and i, I kind of feel the strategy was well if we get in there first make these bids when we find out who wants to commit to the club, then we can focus on who we really want to bring to the club. And really, that makes no sense. For example, I've been told there was one player, a midfield player especially, that we were looking for, who, uh, <laughs> you know, this really highlighted the issue and problem we have because we took so long negotiating with the club that another club actually found out that he was available. They spoke to the club we were talking to originally, literally got the deal done straight away, and they basically stole this player from under our hands. And it wasn't the first time this happened. I mean, Manchester. United especially with Lukaku in that situation and really this wasn't a sustainable way for bringing in transfer targets and it is a bit of a contradiction to how it was a few years ago I mean we were praised for our transfer activity we'd make deals immediately we'd have everyone in before pre-season started and the targets too if we didn't get them the first year they come the second year and there was a plan and unfortunately there are too many cooks in the kitchen now how will MNR's role actually be spread out for example, if Lewis Campos was to come to the club, his role would actually be more of a chief scout. He dictates to scouts where to go to watch players. He basically set up the whole scouting system that he originally created at Monaco, and that could make a lot of sense. Now, what would this mean for Neil Bath? Neil Bath would basically take responsibilities over from the loan army. He'd be in full control of the loan destinations. For the players and of course with the loan army and the loan system it's one of the most important things that the club have created because it generates a lot of money and really helps Chelsea comply with financial fair play and that is one of Emanalo's legacies at the club because it's a sustainable model where it's generating income for the club and at the same time even though there's not a, a massive emphasis on you know youth players coming into the first team it's still giving them a way to really find out out of 30 or 40 players who can really make it into the Chelsea first team. Now, I really feel with the loan army, there is potential there. Me personally, I really feel to really narrow down the focus and improve it. I think we need to get more feeder clubs and I feel that we need to have more people in charge where we can actually find the best possible clubs for our loan players. And you know, there's a lot of going on behind the scenes. Unfortunately, because negotiations were taking so long, when it came to bringing in players to the team, that meant certain players like your Bakers and your Bogers, unfortunately, didn't go to the best clubs they could have gone to. Um, other players as well, such as Kennedy, he couldn't make his loan move to Newcastle. It's not fair on their development because it's effectively wasting a whole season for them. And this is the issue. Now, if we can reduce the amount of people that have opinions and voices when it comes to making decisions at the club I really feel that maybe Marina's method of having people in charge of certain divisions at the club having more responsibility is actually the best direction to head towards for the future what would this mean for Didier Drogba now I was telling you guys that potentially he does have a future as a natural director of football where he'd be more of an ambassador for the club you know the face of the club help with negotiations and deals and speaking to players to attract them to the club and in a way he could actually learn what it really entails to actually you know run a football club and that will help him for the future because Drogba wants to get in the more business side of football after his retirement and now in regards to Drogba's retirement he actually wants to play one more season before he retires basically that means that he probably have a role or position available in 2018 that wouldn't really affect him from coming to the club and taking over that role because as I've just been stating all the roles are being outsourced to people in certain divisions and in a way it's going to be best for us long term still it's going to be really interesting in regards to he will eventually take over that role. I do think that Campos would be a brilliant signing, but we have to realise as well, I mean, the reason why the likes of Silva went for 43 million, Mbappe went for 180 million, Bakayoko went for 40 million, Mendy 52 million. I mean, the reason why they went for fees of that nature was because they were used from a young age and were playing. At the same time, if Campos comes, yes, Emanalo brought in a lot of great players to the club, but a lot of them weren't given the chance. It wasn't the right system to really help them go to the next level or even get game opportunity. Now, if Campos comes and he's scouting the next Mbappes, what's that going to mean? We had Mbappe at this club. He was training with the youth team. We couldn't attract him. 
imagine if he came, would he be the Mbappe he is today? No, probably not. Now this is the issue, which I'm going to delve into into future videos in the future. But I think with Campos coming, even though it will attract a lot of great talent, there's only so much that he can do. So that's always going to be one issue to think about. Now moving on to the next story, and that is Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now his dad, Trevor Loftus-Cheek, has come out stating that he feels that Mourinho didn't do his son any favours. And he stated that if Ruben was at Tottenham, he would have played 70 to 80 games by now. Poch would have given him an opportunity and he'd be a much better player. And I really do believe that and I really do feel that's the same thing. There's a lot of players that were being linked with, like your Goretzkas, your, your Savages. And, you know, Loftus Cleek fits those same dimensions. Now, when I look at Goretzka, for example, Goretzka's played 120 games in his career so far. And it's only now that he's starting to show the top class potential he was showing. That's 120 games to show that. It's not feasible for a player to come in his first year and show top class ability. Yeah, you have the potential, but it's not really finesse just yet. And I really feel that if Loftus Cleek was given the loan opportunities which he wanted to have, but the club rejected him from leaving, he'd have a much more different career at this point in time. He'd be a much more experienced, confident player. And I really feel that he's lucky that there's a lot of people behind the scenes that really support him, you know, at Chelsea and in the English youth structure as well. So we have to thank them for helping him get the opportunity, especially with Southgate from promoting him from the under 21 to the first team. And we're starting to see that ability that he possesses and hopefully that can give him the confidence to really not push on because he's a great player already in my opinion, but for others to really see his natural ability. Now for the final story of the day, and that is in regards to our new stadium. Now. It's not going to get finished until 2024 because there's been another delay. Now, we have got permission from the council and the mayor to start with the planning permission. The delay comes with a network rail. Negotiations still haven't finished and they're still ongoing and they still haven't come to a final resolution. The club are hoping that they do get it done in time, that they want to start with demolition and that's going to start with the museum and the health club. And this will probably commence around the end of 2018. It seems like it's going to be such a long time until Sanford Bridge is redeveloped. We might be away for the next four years while the stadium is actually being built. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's News Daily video. Please like, comment and subscribe. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. And please, if you haven't already, Press the bell notification sign, which is right beside the subscription tab. Press that, say notified to all things Blue Lions TV. I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.